is always back with the next video on J unit. In the last video I've explained what is the J unit and how we can use to test our Java program. In this video I'm going to show you how to download and install J unit. To obtain the most recent version of J unit you can download it and install it from this website junit.org slash junit4. As you can see at the time of this video they are working on J unit 5. So check for the latest version before downloading. Let's click on download and install under the welcome. As you can see under the plain old jar where jar stands for Java Archive, we can download the following jar and put them into our test class path. There are two files here, junit.jar and handquest-core.jar. The handquest file is used in example provided by this JUnit website. If you're not going to use any of its classes and methods, you don't need to download it. The handquest framework extends the capabilities of JUnit testing to include what they call a matches. In other words, you can have a type of assert statement that says assert that something equals something else, which is a little different from assert in JUnit. For this tutorial, uh, I'm going to concern on JUnit, but the handquest extension is worth taking some time to review and becoming familiar with its additional capabilities. You can download more information at handquest.org slash java handquest. For now, I'm going to download two files. Let's click on junit.jar, which will take me to this page, and I'm going to see the latest version of JUnit. So at the time of this recording, I have 4.12, December 5, 2014. So we have different types of files we can download. I'm going to click on a jar file because I need a jar file. Now it's going to ask me this type of file can harm your computer. Don't worry about it. Just click on keep. It's going to download junit-4.12.jar file. And let's go back. And we are going to download this handcrest-core.java file as well. Sorry, jar file. And now we need to click on jar for 1.3 is the latest version. So click on jar. It's going to give you the same option. This file type can harm your computer. Don't worry about it. It's pretty safe. So let's click on keep. Now we have downloaded these two files. Now I have two files in the file explorer. You can see I have JUnit jar file and handcrest core. I'm going to show you how to add this to a Java application. For this tutorial, I'm going to use a NetBeans, but later in the course, I'll use uh, every IDE such as NetBeans, Eclipse, or IntelliJ ID. I will show you all three IDs with JUnit. Now, JUnit is already in the NetBeans. You can even uh, add that repository if you're using Maven or you can just add that it's already in the NetBeans. But I'll show you if you don't see or if you have older version of NetBeans, you can manually import that jar file as a library. Now let's create a new program. I'm going to use a Java application. Click on next and application file name and I'm going to click on finish. And then we can import that file into the library and after that we can use that. Now we should see a project created for us. Let's delete these comments. I'm going to expand my project and then here we have the library. So right now we have JDK 1.8. I'm going to right click on that and I'm going to click on add jar slash folder. Now I'm going to go to Dropbox where I downloaded those two files oops need to go to Dropbox Java projects and there I have JUnit I'm going to double click on that and it will be added to our library all right guys thanks for watching if you like the video make sure to smash the like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and be sure to follow me on Twitter if you have any questions Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Cheers.